it's nearer a 332nd. <laughs> well, who's right? And what's wrong with the steel rule? Well, the steel rule's all right, but not for that kind of measuring. Why don't you try a vernier caliber? We might, but we probably use a micrometer. One of these. This handy little tool is what makes mass production possible. Now, who among you have ever used a micrometer? When you learn to use one of these, you'll be much more valuable to the company and be able to do a better job. Now, after you've had a chance to look over the mic a bit, you're going to see a motion picture that will teach you how to use it. You get the idea, Richard, of preparing the group to see the film. They saw for themselves the limitations of the steel rule I showed them the advantage of learning how to use the micrometer. A chance for a better job. But I wasn't quite ready yet to show the film. In watching the picture, I want you to notice particularly that the micrometer scales are based on the decimal system. And note, uh, well, note how carefully you have to handle it. Particularly watch the film to learn how to use and read them. After you've seen the film, I'll expect you to be able to read the mic yourself. And you'll have a chance to show whether you can. Now we'll see the film. Well, I see what you mean. If they know what they're looking for and why, there's more chance of their seeing it. That's right. And it also means that before you use a picture, you've got to know what's in it. Well, then the first thing for me to do is to see the film myself. That goes for the film strip. You've got to preview that, too. Now, here's the manual. These three things are a training package, a visual aids unit. Looks like a neat job. I can see that you can't very well make specific plans about how to use the film or the film strip until you previewed them. I suppose the next step is to decide how and when and where they'll fit into my training plan. There's a third important step that's very often overlooked. That is, you make sure that your trainees know why they're seeing a film. In other words, prepare them. Prepare them so they'll want to see the film. With the micrometer film, you had the mics right there in the class with you. Suppose it had been a milling machine, a, a lathe. Well, it's not always necessary to see the machine before you see the film. But if it's practical, it's a good idea. Let them get a general idea of what the machine looks like. Take them to the machine. Show them some of the controls. Tell them what they'll see in the film and what you expect them to learn. Another idea is to ask questions, either written or oral, to find out what he already knows and doesn't know about the subject. I suppose holding discussion the way you did with the micrometer is another way of preparing them. Yes, and telling them what they're going to see is a fourth way. Sometimes you use one way, sometimes another. Sometimes you use them in combination. All right. Now, I previewed the film and the film strip. I know why I'm using them. The group knows why it's seeing the film. Shown the film, now what? Well, that depends. But in all cases, you must follow through. Now, in using the micrometer film, I followed up the showing like this. Well, what do we know now? I think it looks pretty easy. I didn't quite understand what he meant by the feel of a micrometer. Uh, what about measuring a round piece of stock? How do you know when the uh, mic is on the diameter? When you're checking the mic for accuracy, how can you tell the standard's correct? All right, those are good questions. Maybe this film strip will help us find the answer. Then I use the film strip to review and emphasize the high points in the film. 
The questions on the film strip developed a lot of discussion. Do you think it would be a good idea to test them right away, for instance? Why not draw the symbol and scales on the blackboard to see if they can read them correctly? Yeah, good. That's all right. But I use the film strip. And look, here in the manual, several frames, you see, are test questions. Take frame eight, for instance. That's right, Johnson. 626,000. Now, here's another one. What's that reading, Mr. Alexander? Now, remember, this is on a two-inch mic. One and 750,000. That's right. Now, let's review the part about inside measurement. Now, the thing to remember when reading this inside micrometer is that the numbers read backwards, so to speak. Chroma, can you explain why those numbers read from right to left? a good way to review the film. Gave everyone a chance to see if he could read the micrometer. You ever show the film the second time for review? You would. You might find there were points that were not clear at all. You might find them when you showed the film strip. You must remember, Richards, that there are no set ways of using visual aid. You've got to work out your own best way in terms of your own training job. I suppose you do have to experiment a little. Yes, you do. You will learn that showing the film is never an end in itself. What do you mean? I mean that the teaching doesn't end when the film does. That is when the teaching begins. You must follow through. By follow through, do you mean showing trainees actually how to use the machine? Right. In using visual aids to teach a skill, the most important part of the follow-up is the actual trial and practice. Here's what I did. Now, this really clinched the learning. Each one of these pieces had its exact width marked on it in thousands. I showed them in this way what was meant by feel. Their readings had to come out the same as the correct measurements marked on each piece. And by passing the different pieces around, they had practice on several different thicknesses. So I followed up by using pieces without the correct measurements given. Makes a lot of sense. I've been expecting too much from just showing the film. <laughs> well, film and film strip won't do the training job for you, Richard. But if you give them half a chance, you'll find them a tremendous help. It takes time, though, to use them right. Yes, it takes time to plan. We found that after the planning's done, if, if they're used right, the whole training process is speeded up. Well, let's see. Uh, have you got a list of the films we have here? Yes. Here's one. The manuals are on file here. And the films and film strip are in this cabinet. Anytime you want to preview any of them, it's easy enough to arrange to use the conference room. In the meantime, I'd like to check this list against my training schedule. A quick way to find out what's in a picture is to look through the manuals. Then if the film has in it what you want, preview the film and the film strip too. Then after seeing the film, make your plans for using it. When you know what's in the picture and what you want to put across, it's easy enough to figure how to prepare the trainees for seeing the film and how to get the most out of it.
Finally, there's the follow-up. And the film strip can be used here, but remember, the film strip is only part of the follow-up. Then you'll get the hang of that and work out your own method as soon as you've used a few of these visual units. The manual gives you several suggestions, but then there are a lot of other ways and variations. Then there's another thing. You'll find that the films give you a real break. So you give the films a break. Keep the shades pulled down tight. Keep direct light off the screen. Get the equipment set up before the group comes in. Have both projectors set up, threaded and focused in advance. That will save time. And of course, arrange the seats so that nobody's head gets in the way of the picture and so that everybody can see the screen. Thanks a lot, Murphy, for all the help you've given me. You know, you've talked so much about that micrometer today that I... I want to learn more about it myself. <laughs> Mind if I take this film with me? Not at all. Go ahead. That's fine. You better take the manual and the film strip so you can do a complete job. 